White Stripes, fell in love with a girl, XFM 104.9. Five past one, of a Saturday, that's what DJs say. Of a Saturday, yeah. Yeah, Of yeah. a Saturday. Yeah. Fast approaching. Yeah, time fast approaching ten past one. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean it's fast approaching? What's it, speeding up, is it? <laughs> time speeding up as it gets towards ten past two. Shut <laughs> up. Ricky Gervais, obviously. With him, Steve Merchant. Yeah, and Carl Pilkinson. Let's not forget Carl P, Carl P the K-Man. He's, pe- he's growing on people, people now. Love him. People love people him. People were thinking, oh, God, oh, he's, he's too much. Now going, they love him. Like, same as you. I mean, they oh, they still think you talk a little bit too much. But, I mean, they love Carl. <laughs> you know, but uh, oh, I shouldn't say that because, it, it, you know, it rock your confidence. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. No, no, I am a man of nerves. In, Sorry, I'm sidetracked, Rick, because I'm looking on the internet here, on the website for XFM. Yeah. Because I was... Well, partly bored, but also I was looking on the other day. That's nothing I said, though, was it? No, no, no. no right. No. And uh, there were some people uh, commenting on the show. Yeah. And one person on there, I'm trying to find it, I don't want to misquote them, but yeah. basically, as far as I remember, they said that uh, we knew even less about the music than the DJs that are on in the week. Right. That's, I think, that is scientifically impossible. Yeah. So they've embarrassed themselves. Exactly. I think, I, I think it's impossible. You can't know less than the people that are I, I don't think so. It's, like, I, it's just, I mean, it's I, like, it's I, like I, trying to multiply zero. You yeah. just end up with zero. It yeah. doesn't make sense. I checked with Steve Taylor, the man with the knowledge. Mm. Um, he should know. But I later. pretty, I don't think that, that's really annoying. It's so annoying because I'll tell you this, we are passionate about the music and we do know what we're talking about. Yeah. Just because we don't read the back of the CD box. No, like and play, play the company. list we're given with the, the nine CDs that are on the playlist every month. There's a piece of paper here. The car's there? looking at me like he's thinking, oh no, we're having a go. You're giving away the magic <laughs> of radio. <laughs> You get pieces of paper here, and they've got little bits of details. So, for instance, White Stripes, this is the next single off White Blood Cells, February 2002. Now, it sounds like we know about the music. We yeah. We that off a piece of paper. Exactly. Whereas, when we say about music and we're wrong, at least we, it's because we didn't know. Exactly. See? All right. <laughs> Don't quit. Look at the All-Stars. The all the old. Because so, I just I don't, don't want to in- criticise there. But if I was listening and I'd enjoyed that track and I yeah. wanted to know what it was, I wouldn't have understood what you just said. Really? Then. Could you just say that again? Low Cause fidelity all stars. Yeah, low fidelity. Because you went. Low fidelity, low fidelity. I was doing all. D- I was doing me DJ. Talk, no, it's just I? you didn't open your mouth wide enough. I can't be bothered. Should. No, sure. It's, it takes too much. Look, at, listen to him crinchling his little crinchling. <laughs> Crinch, you're not crinchling. You're not crinchling your jaffa cakes, are you? It wasn't going out on air. No one knew. I bet you're one of those people in cinemas that think you're being really quiet eating a bag of crisps, aren't you? Do you go to cinemas? Mm, I haven't been for a bit, actually. What Tell do you do, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl! What's an entertaining evening for you? Yeah. What would you do to occupy your time? Uh, like... <laughs> your hobbies, for instance. <laughs> like, I might get a video out from prime time. Right, what, 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 would you enjoy that or would it just be a chore for you? No, no, I think... <laughs> Things like that. You really hate doing that. <laughs> that's, that's when you really switch off and you forget all your problems and stuff. Why well, you haven't got any you problems? You haven't got any problems, Carl. You, you haven't don't g- know that. I put on a face when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> you wear Are you crying inside? This Carl? is you being the happiest you can be. You're like a clown, aren't you? Oh. Do you think I'm like a hard, miserable man? Because there was somebody else. I don't think you're hard. The other day, <laughs> and like I said to him, I can't watch the Elephant Man because it oh. upsets me. <laughs> You're the best! You don't know you're doing it, you're no, the best. Can you watch it? Um, well... I always, when it gets that bit where they're carrying him through the village and, and messing about with his head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, my, this is true, my dad watched that once, and we were watching it, my mum and my sister and that were all quite moved by it, almost oh. really tears, thinking it was a wonderful example of man's inhumanity to man and yeah, all that thing. Yeah. And my dad just went, wouldn't he make an amazing novelty rucksack? <laughs> And it achievement the film for me, and, and I've never had this sort Steve of Steve was thinking, he's not that ugly. <laughs> Blimey, here we go, we were laughing at Carl. Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jeff Cakes. He, he bought some Jeff Cakes, which was lovely. He went across the road and he handed out the Jeff Cakes. And then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? I just remember learning at school. Um, <laughs> I'm not, like, making fun of, of being honest, because it's not funny. But, um... They cure cancer. Jaffa cakes cure cancer. Not not like fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to help him. Yeah. Do you know um it'll, it'll sort of help. If if you've got it, you can't say, right, get me a load of Jaffa cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. 
you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Dr. Fox down here to confirm that? <laughs> I, can't. I can't. I actually can't cope. You know, just play a record. Play a record. Can I just, if anyone has ever survived cancer thanks to Jaffa Cakes, please call in. No, but I didn't say he that. He said, and then he went, it's the orange thing in it. And then he really tried to read it. He said, I wonder if it's, and he tried to read out this scientific name. That's my favourite one I've ever done. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah really, it's really good. good. Mm. Yeah, because I always had a problem with Gomez before because it always sounded like they were trying to sound like these world weary Tom Waits style gravelly voice. Guys. And they were twenty. And they were like fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that that's great. That's really good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well done. Well done, boys. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He gives, gives it thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Can I play an Elvis Costello track? You know, I'd love to bloody hear some Elvis Costello. Don't be saying that. Well, you know why? Because we met him and he's a lovely man. We did meet him. Yeah. And uh, I don't wish him to show off. I remembered all the great songs he's ever done I didn't like his spoken word much too you know too mm, much mm. and uh, some of his later projects I thought were a little bit but his own songs from you know 1978 to about 1980 I thought were great well, why did we meet him I can't just remember why we met him Rick oh I, can't, I, just, I, I wasn't remember. well I wasn't doing that no I, I can't remember we won an award was it because we won another bloody award <laughs> Oh, stop giving us awards, please. Oh, God. Oh, oh God, I've got room in my house. Oh, dear, we've only got two. Yeah, we just and we haven't two. got one of those. The one was the BBC, so he's got a lot of room in his house. And I've got the other one, he let me have it, so he's got no award in his house at all. Can I, um... <laughs> you can borrow it. Can I... I don't, know if you, I don't know who you're talking to someone. I spoke to Richard Wilson from uh, One Foot in the Grave. I, I spoke to him... Yeah, but he's a lovely bloke. He's yeah. a really nice guy, but he said to me, uh, he said, uh, could, you, could, could I uh, do a cameo in the office for £40,000? <laughs> and I went, could, like, Ricky do, like, an amusing pratfall or something? And then you just come in as a cleaner and go, I don't believe it. And he looked at me like, like... Why have you said that? Why oh have you brought no. that up? I felt so guilty. Oh no. I, was, I, was so, I so wanted to apologise. But why is it this? We know it's wrong to I that. don't know why I said it. We, I don't we know, know why do, I said do, it. We, do we think, no, it's different for me. Exactly. Because we're in the business. I'll, I'll do a new twist on yeah. I don't believe it. And he'll go, you know, that's the best <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> it twist I've, I've heard. ever heard. I don't know what I was oh. thinking. Why did you? Oh, you so didn't tell me that. I know, I felt ashamed. I felt really ashamed. Oh no. I was a little bit drunk. I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, it was so no. embarrassing. I was talking to a friend of mine who said, uh, "Who was it? I can't remember, was it? He said that he was watching a new. It was um, it was a sports cast. But it may have been uh, Formula One racing or something like that. And he was watching. And there was a commentator. And he, you know, the commentators have got to keep talking all the time. Yeah. And he was going, and there's, and there's, and there's the uh, team there. Said, oh, good to see so and so's girlfriend in the audience. And uh, he said he saw, and it cut to Richard Wilson in the audience. And he went, and the bloke went, and there's one foot in the grave. <laughs> He knew he had to say it there, but he couldn't oh. just name all the characters. Oh, that's fantastic! And there's one foot in the <laughs> Oh, dear. That'd be brilliant. And there's The Office. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what, you're, you're putting us alongside one foot in the grave? Thing that's been going, like, ten years in the one of us. You're, you're putting us alongside... It beat us, Steve. Get over it. <laughs> it beat us in the Comedy Awards. No, I was just saying that you're an identifiable face if you're at a Formula One event. You okay. know. Old. <laughs> Grumpy. One foot in the grave. Yeah, one foot in the grave, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, any thoughts before we move on? On anything we've said so far? Elvis Costello. Well, I'd like to play um, Red Shoes. Are we ready for... Not yet, I'm just saying. What? Do you know who his dad is? Declas McManus. No, Declas Mc... I don't know his real Declan name. Declan McManus. He was a big band leader in the 50s or something, wasn't he? No, he was in the R. Uh, White's Lemonade ad. Oh! Was he? Oh no, it's so, much, it's so much to do with that. Good, so we're catering there to the uh, audience listening who are 50 and above. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I'm in the target audience. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Oh. Ah, whites, ah, whites lemonade. You must remember that. Never heard that. Oh, no. those, those chimps that drink tea. Oh. Once, right, in school, um, we had a French dictionary. And you know, um, ice cold co co coke on the back of my throat. Singing hello summertime, it's the real thing. Remember that? No. Oh, you know. We translated that into French. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of that story? Yeah. That's the end of the story. Yeah. But I know it in French. Do it. But it doesn't make sense. We just literally did the word. Go on. Let the me word, word. I can't believe you it, remember it, this. Tres fois, coke, sur le derrière, a mon gosh, chante, bonjour, estimel, jump, celebrate. That's the only French you know, isn't it? <laughs> it's not even French. We just did it word for word. It doesn't make any sense. Can you say another word of French? 
Le can you quote Le Shakespeare? De Matin. Can you can you That's can you quote friend. anything else? Is there anything else you can quote other than that? Is there anything else you learned at school that you can remember word for word? No. Nothing. Le chat est sur le mur. I don't just mean French. I mean anything. English. Maybe some a, a bit what of poetry you that you can remember. Of course I can. Yeah. Go on. Quote a bit of poetry for me. Um, like what? Oh, whatever soft, you remember. What, like through on the window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. The rise first sun and kill the envious moon. It was only six as well. Anyway. What, what do you want? really count. What? Shakespeare doesn't count? No, because that's the really, Everyone knows that one. Oh, going what then? What should I know? The Wind Hover by Gerald Manley Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't do that one. I caught this morning's morning minion, Kingdom of Daylight, still thinking of the Lord Lord Falcon and his riding of the Hulk. Oh, no, no, no. We haven't done Carl yet. Wait a minute. K-Man. Anything you can remember from school that you learned that you had to maybe uh, memorize? French. French. Not necessarily French. You could <laughs> anything. Be anything you can remember. This can be anything you remember from school, apart from the orange stuff stops cancer. Yeah. It's not the cough that carries you off, it's the cough in the carry you off in. <laughs> Beatles, Revolution. Mm -hmm. Was that clear? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah, good. We've got to speed this up because we're, you we know, it's funny because our first link when we had to go at like the, the library and the, the playlist, when we played the record, Carl went. You usually do it at the end when you've run out of stuff. Yes. What so, the fuck so we started with what's usually our worst bit of material. So I think we've got <laughs> to do, turn this show round. Right. Uh, Carl's been holding this together, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Carl's beautiful naivety and, uh, can I say it, Carl, in the nicest way, stupidity. <laughs> yes. That are keeping the listeners. Well, I wouldn't class it as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm only joking. Stuff. I'm only joking, mate. Of course you're not stupid. Everyone knows you're not stupid. You're sincere, and, and that and that can sometimes be, you know, it's frowned upon in this cynical world. Would uh, you say you've learned stuff from me in the past few weeks? Definitely. That's definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Rather like a scientist learns from, like, a injecting mice. Yeah. No, but I've learned from you about ants and stuff. I, I think every week, as weeks go, go on, I feel like... We're learning I'm, from each other. I'm learning more now than I did when I was at school. And can I just clarify? Yeah. You, you weren't raised as an experiment and you've escaped from a laboratory. <laughs> you are... You had regular upbringing in Manchester, no? Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't go to school much because my mum and dad had a caravan. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> no need, is there? No need when you've got that sort of fun at home. Yeah. I used to just go away for weeks. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, honestly. Where'd you used to go? Port Maddock. But... <laughs> 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 and um, okay, so you didn't go to school much? No, I, d I did, but not as much as everyone else. No. How many holidays were your parents having? Oh, what, what, what was their income that they could... No, well, my dad used to work nights, and uh, he used to travel back cause to Manchester from Wales. It wasn't that far. And Manchester he used to, do, to Wales? He used to do four on and four off, so <laughs> me and my mum were, like, loving it. But what, what's... What, what, Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port Maddock. Just down the road from Port Merion, where they filmed The Prisoner. Right. Oh, so, so that, that's cleared up for me. <laughs> yeah, Location-wise. So what did you do then? You you were in this little two-birth caravan on the back of a, a Cortina estate. Right. Well, what was it? What was the car? I want the. Uh, what was Granada, it? Granada. Ford Granada. Ford Granada. What are we talking? 1980. Yeah, 82, 83, 80, right? 84, 85. Okay. And you in in the car down there? Down there. <laughs> park up. Yeah. What was it? What what was Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port, Port Maddock. Maddock. I remember Ruth. It's just, oh yeah. Uh, it's just a holiday camp. Yeah, and at an arcade and a beach, I was wor I was loving it. Yeah. But um, so so of the fifty-two weeks of the year, let's assume I don't know how many weeks you take off normally for holidays anyway. Let's just say I don't know. You go to school forty-five weeks of the year, maybe. Generally, most kids. No. Nah. Bit less. Bit less than that. that. Forty-two. How right? many weeks would you say you actually spent in school? Well, how many weeks do you have off for summer? Well, we just we'll work that out. That's what about we six off for summer. About six, four, three for Easter. About three for Christmas. Put it this way, I'm surprised I'm not Welsh, to be honest. Right. Because I was there more than I was in Manchester. Did I they not, did the school authority not come and check you no, out? No, they didn't. Didn't get Manchester, I suppose they didn't care, do they? Not really. Yeah. They're lucky you yeah. turned up at all. Why did you just turn up for the last day when you could take in your best toy? <laughs> did you know that when you could take in any I game? Just, just play with everyone else's. Why, why, you know, why break my stuff? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, cool. Well, point. this answers a lot. This does answer a lot. The fact that you spent most of your time on the beach as a kid. Teachers were no good at my school. We were right. talking about it yesterday. About so you were teaching them a lesson by going <laughs> off in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And uh, did you go to university? No. No, 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 no. Did you go to sixth form or college? No. When, when did you leave school? When I was about 15. 
Right. What, you, you just went on holiday and didn't come back? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a job early, didn't I? Cause Where I was it? Port Maddock? Getting there. No, I was a printer. BM yeah. Print in Trafford Park. Well, yeah. that's great. That's a little interview little, there. Yeah, little uh, ne- Next, there. I'll be interviewing Steve Merchant. What are we playing next? Bit of Elbow. Oh, I, oh, this is fantastic. This is Elbow. Yeah. Elbow, Asleep in the Back. I, I think that is absolutely beautiful. I think Elbow are my favourite new group. We've sang their praises many times and they've never phoned to thank us. Should they? Yes. Do they? Annoying. Really? Annoying. No, they're, they're doing a good job there. I wonder if they found their lyrics. Because mm. I w- also wanted to write a song for them, didn't I? They didn't, they didn't take me up on that either, Steve. I'm not sure I'm so keen on them, though. <laughs> Carl, can yeah. I have a Jaffa cake? Because I've just found a lump. <laughs> <laughs> I think, do you don't mean me, do you? No, no, no. no. All no, right, no. good. Thanks, um, Steve. Now, mm. we interviewed Carl there. We've, I think we've learnt a little bit more about Carl there. We did, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to interview Steve now, um, Carl, all because right. I used to be... You concentrating? Mm. Don't put it all in at once. Carl, chew. Chew before you swallow. Careful. Um, right. Um, I used to suffer with that a lot. What? what? Not chewing. The amount of times I nearly died as a kid. What? <coughs> Forgetting to chew. Choking. Sure. Mint Imperials. Mm. My mum stole them. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking them with water. <laughs> she used to have to hide them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming out of his show, isn't he? He's happy Saturdays. He's miserable all week, and he's happy Saturdays, isn't he? Oh, look at him. It's like we get him weekends. Yeah, yeah. And he's just happy because we sort of spoil him, don't we? And he has Jaffa exactly. cakes and everything. We let him so on the radio. He has to go live with his stepmother again, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The ones who listen. Oh, you really? Yeah. Your girlfriend does, doesn't she? I imagine she's been away for ages. I know. I imagine she just switches off after a while. But you know, you know, we, you know, we love you, don't you? you know, we're excited. We talk about you in the week, and we, you know, we think you're great. So don't just think we're using you as a cheap a... comedy material. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you to think that. Carl. <laughs> right. No, I'm going to interview Steve. You know, because I used to be a chat show host. Well, I'm a chat show host. <laughs> well. Well, did you see me at Ricky Gervais? <laughs> no. <laughs> I worked on it and I didn't watch it. No <laughs> one watched true, it. That's true, that's terrible. No one watched it. What do you think, Carl? I loved it. See? Are you thinking of Parkinson? And I didn't know Ricky then, so I'm being fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to interview Steve Merchant now. Okay. Live on our XFM 104.9. We should say that more often. Yes. Cause Ricky people, Gervais. Because they might tune I think they've got a hospital radio by <laughs> mistake. Um, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Okay, um, Steve Merchant. Hello. Great to be here. Hi. So now, um... Uh, you're a very tall man, yes. if I might say. You're six foot seven, aren't you? Yes. Was that a bit of a problem at school? Uh, well, yeah, a few few jokes here and there. Yeah, a bit of gentle ribbing, but not yeah. really too problematic. What's the weather like up there? Well, exactly. <laughs> Skinny, <laughs> Skinny <laughs> all that sort of thing. Oh, you're lanky. Yeah, oh, dear. Right. And, uh, that, but yeah. uh, uh, what about the glasses? Well, I wear glasses, but again, that wouldn't be really a problem, you know. They didn't give you four eyes, no, really. They didn't give you four eyes, freaky lank no, thing. They didn't give you freak pot. Freaky the freakish All right, I'm gimp, not sure four eyes gimp. Oh, well, I'm, not sure well, I'm just saying, they didn't do that. That's an interview, I'm not sure that's the best approach. Okay, okay, and then you I'm left school. Is. You left school, yeah. you went to university. Mm. There were you called freaky, no, freak eyed, four eyed git thing? Are you sure? Never been called it. Were freaky. you called freaky, lanky, four eyed, stupid hair, um, boggle eyed, freak face, fish face? <laughs> is your chat show coming back? <laughs> Is this what you? S- I never watched you. Is this what you said to people like? I mean, you had some big names on there, didn't you? Tony Hart. Yeah. That bloke off Ground Force. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem was they'd either heard of me or they hadn't. Either way, <laughs> either they didn't want to. It was a problem. Yeah, it was a, it was, a, it was, a, it was a problem. Who would you say was the biggest name you had? Uh, they're all dead now. <laughs> okay. Um, probably the youngest one uh, survived. I think Penny Smith is still with us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, biggest name. You had Ooh. Savile. Jimmy you Sabre, you had Daniels, Paul. Yeah, Paul Daniels, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and, but which was the biggest name, would you say, that you had on the show from the 1970s? <laughs> Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis, of course. He was yeah. a joy. No, yeah. but, um... So that's just... But it's not coming back, though, that show. We're not it, 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 no, not, not, not in that form. They, the Channel 4 wanted to see some changes. What sort of changes? Ratings. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to play a lovely track. Thanks, Steve Merchant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I'm going to play Love Trailer by Elvis Costello. I think one of his first hits, maybe even be his first hit back back in the 70s. Um, this is uh, Red Shoes. <laughs> Zinger meets Spray, apparently. Mm-hmm. I've never heard of him. Sounds good. It's spelt Spry, though, but the car reckons it's Spray. 
song too, a cover of uh, Blair's song too. Yes. You wouldn't recognise it, In would a dub you? version, no. In a, an old school reggae dub style. Nicely. Big em up. Yeah, all that. Oh, we know all that. Mm. We know, all the we wording. Yeah. Oh, we know, we know all that, yeah. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, that was that was quite interesting. I quite like that. Yeah, that was not, not bad. Filled up three minutes. Before that, Elvis Costello, Red Shoes. Lovely. What a great song. Debut, was it? Debut single? I think so. I might, I, I, it's the first one I remember of his, but, you we'll know. We'll probably I mean, give Elvis a call, won't we, and chat to him about it. Yeah. He's a yeah. big pal now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Elvis celebrity. Yes. Lifestyle. You um what? Because uh, you told me something else about your celebrity world that I thought might be of interest to the listeners. I don't know if you're happy to mention it. What? Your uh, forthcoming TV appearance. Kind oh of might yeah. Be interesting. Oh yeah. What I've been invited. Done? I don't usually do these things. Yeah. But I, I I I sort of quite like the show. I've watched it for a while. So I'm at Room 101. Have you seen this, Carl? Do you know that show? Mm. You, you don't, don't like <laughs> it? No. It's a bit, bit. Is it still Nick Hancock as well? No. Who is it? Paul Merton. But is he still around? I've seen him for ages. He's probably going to be a great pal of mine come Tuesday. No, so, I mean, <laughs> that, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> no. Have you have you got all the channels tuned in right <laughs> on your TV? <laughs> Paul Merton's a huge star. He's on all the time. <laughs> yeah. No, is he a heck? Yeah, he's on there. Have I got news for you and all the rest of it? Yeah. What's the rest of it? Well, anyway, look. <laughs> Room 101 <laughs> is the show. Room 101. Uh, uh, is the yeah. show where you put in the things you hate in yeah. this imaginary room. And I thought I'd do it because it's a real laugh because, you know, they let you speak and it seems like a bit of fun. What so are you going to put in there? Oh, I d well, I'll ruin it, won't I, for all the listeners? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Switch off now if you don't want to hear what Ricky Gervais <laughs> is going to put in Room 101. I don't know, just things that irritate me. Like, I don't know, um, uh, I'm putting in noisy people, people who make unnecessary noise, for one thing. Like right. That. Right. Can I just stop you there for just one second? You know I what I'm saying? Say. No, 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 no. I'm I just gonna think, oh, I was just thinking, I just wonder if there's a little case there of the pot calling <laughs> the kettle black. Because you are the most annoying man ever in the history of all things. I mean, I've met a lot of people in my life, I like to think. I mean, even everyone. I mean, there <laughs> was anyone I went to school with who was possibly, I mean, an evil man would throw things at people when, the, you know, the teachers just throw stuff at them all the way through the lesson, throw things at the back of your head. Yeah. Even he was not ir as irritating as you are. Really? Just, just the fact that you're just crunching up a plastic spoon now. Well, what's talk, good is annoying. that? It's, it's annoying. Not... Yeah, I know, but oh, it's just, you're so irritating. You're always making the little noises, just little sounds all the time. <laughs> we, were, we were working yesterday. We were working yesterday, right? And I was typing this, and he had an elastic band between his teeth, <laughs> right? I don't know how he got. You know, how he, he just seems to end up with an elastic band between his teeth, right? And he was flicking it, so it was making a noise, boom, 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 boom. What were you saying? You were just going, the rain on Spain <laughs> falls mainly on the plain. The rain, the rain in, in Spain, Spain stays Spain mainly on, on the plain. plain. Just kept doing that, right? Repetitively. Yeah. I eventually, I don't know what are you doing? What are you up to? He went, oh, sorry. Tried to wrap the elastic band round his face, right? It flipped up, hit him in the nose. <laughs> right, he screamed, because that hurt, obviously, it came quite tight. Then he said to me, he said, if I can flip this elastic band and hit your glasses, <laughs> right, not, not, not your face, but if I can hit your glasses, can I flip the elastic band at you? I went, well, how am I going to find out if you can do it? You might hear my face. Uh, he went, well, why don't you cover up the skin on your face, your yeah. nose and everything, with some paper. Which he did! Yeah, just to keep you happy. Yeah. And then he flicks it at me. So I grabbed it, flicked it at him. He ran off screaming, swearing at me. <laughs> well, don't frighten me! I was saying, don't be so childish. Retaliation is childish. I did it first, it's so... It's pathetic. Endlessly. Just this kind of... No, but you know, that you agree with me on the people who just, like, I can't stand noisy eaters, people who go... No, no, like I, that. No, and, I do uh, agree with that. And, and people eating crisps, as I said before, people eating crisps in cinemas. And, well, anyone who's making noise in the cinema, it's oh, an I know. Are they, they must be mental. They've gone to see a film, there's people they don't know there, everyone's paid eight quid. And they're and crunching away. Oh, leaving their phones on! There, I, there was, I was in the cinema, there was a 16-year-old girl, Took a phone call in the cinema, the, the film was running, she said, and she went, hi, yeah, I'm in the cinema. Started having a conversation on the phone. I was thinking, yeah. how important is this call yeah. that you've got to receive? Oh, yeah. it's Tokyo ringing, Mr. <laughs> Yakamoto's there, the deal's going through. <laughs> it's Saturday afternoon, you should be up there, hairdressers. <laughs> I just was so, I was in the cinema. Oh, by the way, Mr. Yakamoto's coming round tonight, and we can't use my pad, so yeah. you've got to make him a meal. Yes. Don't you and your wife muck <laughs> things up for me. But we, I was in the cinema, this was not, it's not long ago, and, um, I went to see that, fi this was, uh, I think I was off to see that film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon or whatever it's called. Do you know the, the well, they could be on the phone for that because there's subtitles, but it's not going to ruin it, is it? Yeah, it wasn't her. This was, I was sat next to another woman. She was crunching away, a big uh, fat woman. No, but he's got, a good, he's got a good point there. Loads of people could be on the phone in there and it wouldn't sort of <laughs> niggle you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> well, at least we've cleared that <laughs> Imagine one. if that was true. No, because, well, it's like when you go on the tube and read a paper, there's loads of noise, but you can still concentrate, can't you? He's got you. Do you know That's I mean? such a great point, isn't it? Right, yeah, because it's so easy to lose yourself in that Im magic realism world 
you know, with all the sound effects and music and surging, exciting noise. That and there's a woman clattering on, going, "Yeah, well, I'll probably meet you later, Stange. Should we get some diamond white in, hanging by the park?" Yeah. Switch off. I do it. Yeah, but we know what you're like. <laughs> yeah, you can switch off, Carl. It's like you can turn your ears off. <laughs> That's the skill well, you it's have. not the ears, it's the, it's the behind the ears. Yeah. It's the process that between the ears and the brain that you can exactly. switch off. So we can still hear all these things like a cat. But I was in the room, there was this woman sat next to me, she was, she was a big fan one, she was crunching on some popcorn. Again, that's a crime. Why are they selling popcorn in cinemas? I don't understand why she the noisiest... She needs regularly, why have the noise? Why the noisiest food in a cinema? Yeah. I don't understand why that's come about. Yeah. It really mm. makes me angry. Yeah. Exactly right. Smoothies. We want smoothies without straws. <laughs> exactly. The trailer for that film AI, Artificial Intelligence, came on. Do you remember mm. that? And the tagline was, David is 11 years old. He weighs 60 pounds. He's four foot six inches tall. He has brown hair. His love is real, but he is not. Oh, yeah. And she just went, how old was he again? <laughs> <laughs> to her boyfriend. Uh, right? Just ruined uh, it. Right? War film trailer comes on for some Pearl Harbor or something. She goes, yeah, don't fancy that. Just announcing this. Don't fancy that. Too many war films. So then the uh, trailer, th then the opening credit comes on for um, Crouching Tiger. Uh, we know, well, before that, the, you know that thing that comes up that says it's signed by the BBFC and it has the kind of certificate and everything, and that certificate to say what age you have to be. Mm -hmm. to see. That mm -hmm. came up, and it says Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, in brackets, subtitles. She went, it's not subtitled, is it? <laughs> I thought this was the most famous foreign film for years. It won Oscars, it was a huge film, everyone knew it was foreign. She goes, it went, and it, so the, the, the credits begin, it says Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She went, stupid name for a film. <laughs> she just she won paid it. to see it. She was with her boyfriend. So then it starts, right? And obviously it's in Japanese or Mandarin or something. She's like, yeah, and they're doing that. They're all talking in Japanese. Japanese or Mandarin. Yeah, whatever. So they're speaking in this, uh, you know, Japanese language, Oriental language. And she's going, don't they sound stupid? Hot ching chong 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 chong. Don't they sound stupid? She's going, and then the subtitles come up, and it's quite a weird kind of strange language they're talking. And she's going, can't make the subtitles out either. It's both gobbledygook. Just wittering on every yeah, I, step I of the film. You. I totally agree with you, but what I like in your telling of it, I know you're so getting quite I emotional. I genuinely live it. But if you went Mandarin or Japanese, <laughs> some more your language, and it, <laughs> well, I don't know what it was. It's a strange language. <laughs> it's a strange language. Well, anyway, oh dear. So then I moved. I climbed over several seats, made a big huff of, you know, make a big show of moving. Yeah. So next to a guy on the phone, just chatting on the phone. Oh, I'd have gone mental at that. I was lit. I was. I, 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 so now I hate that film. I, don't, I didn't enjoy it. I don't like seeing it. I don't want to even think of it. It's subtitles, isn't it? Well, rubbish. Rubbish. That's why I get videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I should have thought that through, Carl. You're absolutely right. Lamb Chop? Yeah, let's play Lamb Chop. This is brilliant. This is from this CD that came out recently with the Uncut magazine. Occasionally they put out some quite uh, interesting free CDs. And this was one that had uh, various covers of Rolling Stones songs. And a lot of them were you know, quite, quite shoddy, but this was a brilliant, uh, specially done, I think, for uh, the, uh, the CD. It's Lamb Chop doing a, a version of quite an obscure Rolling Stones song called Backstreet Girl. It's just beautiful. Let's hear it. Andy Warhols, get off. Getting a little bit blase now. Steve's just wandered off to make the tea. He's talking to Dermot. Can he? Is he not really? Is he? Yeah. Is he just down there? Can he hear this? No. That's that is that is a bit shoddy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to see um, Pop Idol tonight. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Who do you think will win? Um, will or Gareth? I don't care. Don't you really? No. It was in. Um, was I boring you? Sorry. It was in, no. It was in Leicester Square, right? The little lad. Yeah. In. Uh, Big coach with his head on the side. Yeah. I mean, how long has he been around? Was it an accident? <laughs> no, but do, do you know like those ones that footballers have? Big so heads? No, they're, they're co really big coaches. I mean, he's only a small one. Big lad. coach, what like? I don't know why he needs a, Trainers, a you big mean? coach. <laughs> Look, if he's just going to be like that, I'm not telling you. Sorry, go on. A uh, big coach yeah. with his head on the side, and he yeah. came in. And his picture, like, his picture yeah, on yeah, the side. Yeah. yeah. Right, and about 200 kids screaming and going mental for him. Really? And I just don't think it's right. No, it's not. I mean, it's been around for, what, a couple of weeks? And the way everyone keeps going on about his stuttering... What, you think they should really concentrate on worshipping worthy sort of things like S Club 7 and A1 and... Well... Who, who have been around for a year? So you pick on so me when Steve's not well around. It's only a joke, Steve. isn't it? Here he comes. Here he comes. He can't believe it. But it's just the way, like, they keep going on about the stuttering. Yeah. What's going on here? Well, you were, well, you were late. What are we meant to do? Oh, we can't possibly go on without Steve. Oh, we need Sting. What? Hey, <laughs> See, that's the reason you shouldn't do it without me. That meant nothing. 
Probably a good reason not to let you have this cup of tea. But I will anyway. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Um, just saying that um, uh, Carl thinks all this nonsense about Pop Idol is a little bit sort of uh, shallow because uh, they've not been around long enough to be worshipped by children. Just saying that when you were talking to Unlike Santa that. Claus, who's been around well for forever. <laughs> yes. He, he was in Leicester Square in a big coach of his own. Who was? Gareth. He's only a small lad. He had the biggest coach I've ever seen. A coach? Yeah. One of those like National Express coaches. He just probably come down from wherever it is he lives. No, 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 with his head on the side. What? We went through this. His own, his own coach, not, not, not like. You a mean like a tour bus? bus? Yeah, but with his, with his head on the side. With his face so on his, his own coach. <laughs> <laughs> was he driving it? <laughs> was he really nasty? Go, we can't have a toilet break yet. You had your chance. <laughs> yeah. Sit down. Wait till we get, get the service. I'm finishing this fag and then we're moving on. And if you're not back from the toilets, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. it's a lovely restaurant here. Um, <laughs> all right, Jeff. Well, you know <laughs> the people. Yeah, well, not my brother-in-law or anything. Um, it yeah. would have been. It wouldn't have been quite as snappy as that if he'd been saying all that. No, no. no. Yeah, well, that's it. Everyone keeps talking about the stuttering, but they never go on about his asthma, and he's got really bad asthma. <laughs> They you're don't. Right. We, you're right, we should attack the asthma more as well. Do you think he's held that back for the final? Do you think he's bringing out the big guns for the final? Oh, and by the way, I've got uh, Did you think there's a breathing asthma. Way he does that. <sighs> well, he's trying to... It's, that's that's a not therapy. asthma, Carl. That's him trying to breathe in order to help him speak. That's a, th that's a therapy. Have you that's... guessed about the asthma? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Have you, you read, read this or something. But you thought his asthma was because he goes... <sighs> That's him. He has to do that to get over the. the have to take me back. That's a yeah, uh, the therapist. Uh, got bad asthma then. What if you ever have kids? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he hasn't got asthma. When you yet. cross a road, don't bother looking both ways. Yeah. Just walk straight across. I love that. Am I the doctor saying that? Oh, not asthma. No, he does that. Like, Has he? No, it's not <laughs> asthma then. Uh, okay, well I'm. You, stuck, we better mate. operate. Well, they yeah, well do. don't operate. He's just no. He just fell over. No, yeah. I heard him breathing heavily. Yeah. Probably got something lodged. I've got, a, I've got a story about breathing heavily after this next record. Do you want to do? Faramunch, got you. Although Steve thinks it's Faramunk. It makes more sense, don't you think? Monch is a bit of a rubbish word, whereas monk, brilliant. Yeah, but Let's not discuss it. No, let's not get into a you know a big highfalutin yeah exactly phonetics argument. No. They can call themselves what they want. That's up to them. And good luck to them. Yep, good guys, good guys. Now, I am going to Pop Idol tonight. Yep. This is what started it until he said there was a a young kid being screamed at by kids because he had his own coach with his head on the side. Yeah. Uh, you know, we did. You did sort of like. I don't know why you're going there, Rick, because you know who's going to win. It's going to no, be Gareth, and there's no. Not necessarily. It is, oh, it is. No. No, don't even fool yourself trying to drum up some excitement. Well, look, wait. You see, they've both got about the same vote, and uh, and um, uh, Darius has got like a million and a half. Now, I don't think the Darius vote was sort of like the Gareth sort of floating voters, because he, you know, because he's a cute kid and everything, and he sort of like looks like a pop idol. And, you know, but he's not as good a musician. And I think maybe when people went for Darius, they were a bit kitsch, but I think they, they might... Do you want to make a wager? Oh, well, I bet Gareth will win. Exactly. You see? You may as well stay home, Rick. You just want to go to meet PJ and Duncan. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they call themselves out on deck nowadays. Well, fair enough. They're, they're my favourite. They'll always be PJ and Duncan to me, and they're, they're brilliant. brilliant. They, they are brilliant, brilliant, aren't they? They're the best but it presenters. Seems to me there's no one else like on TV that kind of unites everyone. I don't think there's anyone really no. that can honestly say, if they're being honest, that they don't like Ant and Deck. I know. It's like there's no one else like Phony it. Phony no if one. you don't like Ant and Deck. And I'd like, to, yeah, I'd like to hear your arguments for it. because I'll tell yeah. you, And I'm not saying about this ironically, oh, I like a couple of kids presenters ironically. I think no. they're genuinely good. They're, yeah, they're good. They're yeah, likeable, they're, they're funny. Yeah, and you can Charming. see they've got a great relationship as well. They've they got that sort of Morecambe and Wise, every man appeal. They're brilliant. Yeah, well, we love Ant and Deck. Did you see in the week there was a, no, what's his name, the fellow that, um, Dominic Mohan in The Sun, he's the kind of entertainment star. Yeah. Right? And uh, he had sort of ten, ten questions that should be answered about Pop Idol, because he thinks, you know, uh, uh, they, everyone's got a vested interest in Gareth winning, da 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 And there various questions, one of which was, why is it that what Gareth only seems to stutter when he's being interviewed live? It's because he's nervous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've answered that one for you, Dominic. He was trying, you realised that he'd written a list, and he didn't really have enough to fill up ten. 
Although you you were nasty about his stutter, you said it annoys you. No, I'm not arguing that it, oh, the stutter annoys me. His query was he thought that he was affecting the stutter. How in order can you to be annoyed, annoyed at someone stuttering though? It really annoys me because it's it's just embarrassing. It's cringeworthy. See, the thing is, is I know people say, oh, you, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be an issue, right? We're talking about a pop idol. Now, no one, everyone accepts the fact that he's got to be a good-looking guy to be a pop idol. We all accept that. And yeah. I'm saying I also want him to be able to speak properly to be my pop idol. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having a stutter. But that's, no, that's I'm not true. Saying there's wrong no, that, with that, that, that is true. But there is true. That there is, if there's a body fascism. Yeah, there should but, also be a but, vocal fascism. Yeah, but there's not a trauma if you don't look mm. like a pop star. There is a trauma in society if you can't speak normally. So it's what, a much a bigger issue. His trauma. Well, yeah, of course, of course it is. But, I, it, but it's not. I'm not. Arg I'm not arguing about. What we think, because no, a lot, a lot of people think that a lot of people get abuse if they're ugly. I mean, I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm assuming that's well, the I, case. Well, I can't speak very well. No, I don't, well, I don't know if that's the case. But we'd make one great pop star between I like us. I think so. My looks and your talky. <laughs> <laughs> Although you sound like some sort of weird words or. I'm soft. not trying to be a pop idol. <laughs> All right. I, people can idolise me in their own small ways. Oh great radio dear. Oh god. Look at us three. Imagine if we tried to be like um, BB Mac or like funky ones. I'm just thinking of like three good-looking guys. Genesis. Did I mention about when we were in America? Did I mention that last week? The police. No. Did I mention this to you, Carl? Oh. Sure I mentioned it last week. Yeah. When we, I was in America at a wedding. We went to a wedding with some friends. We were walking through America. There was five of us walking down the street in New York. And uh, a car pulls up and some uh, Chinese tourists lean out. And they went to us. Excuse me, are you in sync? <laughs> and we said, yes, we are. <laughs> and they were taking our photo and stuff. Just think of Steve at the back. That were like uh, two Can foot I, taller than the others. Which member of NSYNC is two foot taller than all the rest? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hey, Chinese cool. people like... Tall people or something. Right, play a record. No, no, seriously. No, no, because it's... It, it, I, I don't think you know what you're talking about, yeah. Carl. We're yeah. likely to get in dangerous territory. Yeah. Don't Chinese people like tall people? There's something that... I'm sure... I'm sure... Do you know like... Alice Phone in if you're Chinese and you like Carl, tall what, people. what worries me is that when they did Chinese lessons, <laughs> you were down the beach in Wales. In... <laughs> in, in, in Ruth Maddock. Paul yeah. Maddock. Paul Maddock. Oh. Do you want to play the lead? Oh, this is Song for the Lovers. It's a beautiful track. It's Satellite Love. It's classic. It's gorgeous. It's Lou Reed. Rick, can I dedicate this to someone? Go on, then. So Carl, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have pressed the button. Well, it's, that's, he's doing his job. No. You shouldn't have said, can I dedicate this to someone? We've had a letter. Yeah. Sophie wants to dedicate a song to her boyfriend, Peter. They're uh, fan, firm fans of the show. All Let's right. play Satellite of Love for them. By yeah, Lou Reed. beautiful, beautiful. Song for the Lovers. Don't ruin it this time, Carl. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, brilliant. How, how to ruin a song by Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Do you want to explain what you were doing? Uh, I was just um, singing well, along what, to the backing not just, vocal. You're not just singing along. Doing it like a mental. Well, just, just give us a pause. Well, I haven't got my headphones on. I've got to do it in time, haven't I, now? Because it's, wait, was it? Is it finished? It's finished, it's finished now. It? And it was just going, when oh, Bowie, right. when well, Bowie goes, it goes, satellite. I was going, ah, <laughs> Like that. Yeah. yeah. But you, on, in room 101, you're going to put irritating people. <laughs> I know, but it's so much nice what making. Are you going to climb down that little thing and climb in yourself? <laughs> it's sort of, yeah, yeah, maybe. You know they have sort of a visual representation <laughs> of the thing that irritates them. They always have that, like Shakespeare, it would be a bust of Shakespeare's head. Which is a picture yeah. of you. Yeah. Ideally. Oh, dear. Oh, <laughs> Bowie in the background, Satellite of Love, Song for the Lovers. I, I should have, I should have liked Song of Love on air. I love the idea of you when that came out, you know, sort of 17, got a girl back to your place, you know, <laughs> just, just making out with her. Just that record's on in the background, you just go, ow <laughs> I do have to shoot off now, right? ow Just leave me to it, I'll enjoy myself. ow <laughs> <laughs> I'll finish myself off. ow <laughs> I'll finish, oh dear. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, oh. we've cheapened that song. Oh. You, you've ruined that song forever for me. Like, no, I it? haven't. But it's, see, the thing about Lou Reed is because Perfect Day, just yeah. a genius song, but we can never play it now, can we, because of that BBC act. No, because I'll tell you what, what's her name coming in at the end? Um, M People. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, oh, that thing she does it's with her voice. That song. There's oh. a couple of songs that have kind of, like, I always remember. Um, and who's that one that goes, um, it's such a perfect day? Yeah, it's a who's bit that? of opera ponce. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. That's a song. Any other songs ruined because of their association with things? Um, 
That song, um, First Time, which was on the Coke ad. First time, first love. Was that, was that, was that, was that, was that, wasn't that Fallen on Blondes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was just, Robin Givens. Was Robin Givens, yeah. What was the, didn't Fallen on Blondes do something like that? No, not I just keep time. seeing Fallen on Blondes in the, in the playlist. I think Fallen on Blondes just, they ruin their own career <laughs> by writing songs. <laughs> yeah. It's becoming a feature. Yeah, we should play Fallen on Blondes one week. Um, Rick, I was going to say something to you before Go we got sidetracked. Uh, <laughs> what were we talking about, Carl? Oh, we were oh, talking no. about, um... We nearly lost it then, but I think we pulled it back. <laughs> it's okay, no, we had a fascinating fact that we were going to... Oh, yeah, Carl's. if everyone in China, Carl... This is true, Carl. Right, Carl, wake up and listen. Listen, if everyone in China... <laughs> <laughs> Jump! It wouldn't be it wouldn't be hard to coordinate. They did hands across America. They did up up yours, the laws, right? We can coordinate this. We can get the sun involved or something, right? Everyone, a billion, one point two billion or something, jumped up and down at the same time. Shut up! <laughs> you're not, you're not saying this clearly. It would enough. cause a tidal wave that would destroy America. If every person in China jumped up at the same time, that would cause a tidal wave that would destroy America. Apparently, according to physics. According to physics, it is no true. True, it's a fact. I'm not. We're not making this up. We, we both know this yeah. is a fact. We're not making it up. We've heard it, but yeah. obviously, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what that's based on. Someone going, just had a terrible thought, <laughs> Mr. President. What is it? No, you know the atomic bomb and all that. Yeah, forget it. Forget it. If everyone in China jumped up and down, they'd wipe us out. Right. You know what I mean? See, there should be some Chinese leader just threatening them with that. Yeah, just showing them a picture just of pictures. everyone just poised. <laughs> just, uh, just pictures of China people just crouching. On pogo sticks. <laughs> exactly. Just a, a billion or Chinese just, people. Just, just all stood on, on, on the Great Wall of China. <laughs> <laughs> that would be brilliant. Oh, See, dear. Carl, he's, he's dumbfounded. He's scared he's now. He's scared now, isn't you? But there's more chickens in the world than people. <laughs> oh. Play record. Well, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Someone made me sit in their car once, uh, with their new car stereo system, uh, so that they could play me the beginning of Money for Nothing. Oh. Just sat there and was like, yeah. Have we <laughs> got that? You've probably got that in the library, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Is it right that Rod... Roger Daltrey, in yeah, the who, yeah, 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 that's right. His kid is in EastEnders, the like, one who plays Robbie. Somebody my mum told me, and I don't know if she's got it right or wrong. What? Well, it does look like that's him. What, Dean, Dean Gaffney. Gaffney. Yeah, but he didn't want to go off his dad's name and that, so he's changed. <laughs> so he it. used his brilliant talent. <laughs> his <laughs> pox face. <laughs> do, do you know if that's right? Well, I don't know. It looks like him, doesn't it? Well, I'm sure that's libelous if it's wrong. Oh right, that's yeah, you'd be ashamed to have Roger Daltrey as your dad. Well, no, but Roger Daltrey might not want it getting round that he gave birth to Specky. Yeah, right, actually. I see what you mean. Specky? Spotty? Spotty, so I yeah. looked at you. Yeah. All right, calm down. Well, Jeez, I don't know, you've got a nice clear skin. At least I didn't call you Spotty Goggle-Eyed Freak, boy. You've you got a nice skin, not a co nice complexion, smooth-faced Goggle-Eyed Freak, boy, oh, fish. thank you. Yeah. Must be nice. Carl, oh, what? Don't you like us arguing? Is it like mum and dad arguing? Do you get all... It's a bit like that. In the caravan. <laughs> 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 no, there was nowhere to escape to. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, rattling around. Did you make little... any friends when you were down on the caravan site? Yeah, a lot of people from Birmingham were there. What kind of uh, pals did you have? What were their names? Uh, they, they were, I can't remember, it was years ago, but yeah. they all had rich parents. Right. Like They had like their own car to drive around the campsite on and all that. Right. Yeah. So I their own fence. So I'd have with and oh. uh, but they were mates and you <laughs> saw them every year, did you? Or every three weeks when you went down there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, you didn't keep in touch with any of them? Uh, no. I'll, I'll admit now, I went, I went to the same place in the caravan for about six years running. I went to a place called Riverside in Bognor, because mm. someone round the corner from us had a caravan, two birth caravan, me, my mum and my nan. I think I'm really lucky to, <laughs> to, have, a, to have had it, really. Because a lot of mates who I had didn't have enough money to go on holiday, and they'd just get a present for the summer holiday. I would like, I would just like... Of course, I, they've I, got I, an education, so... It's yeah, yeah but Carl, the thing is with Carl is, right, I want to give him gifts. Yeah. I want it to be have, a, have the loveliest Christmas ever. I want it to go pony trekking. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I want to just... Scare the horses. <laughs> <laughs> so many things we don't know about, Carl. <laughs> fell off one out of fate, and uh, the woman didn't know what to do. She couldn't handle the horse. It was running off. I was hanging underneath, getting a kick in the head. No, really? No. Now, hang on. What age were you? <laughs> this could explain a lot. I was about six. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> well, I think we've got oh, to the bottom of it here. Oh, no. Got <laughs> kicked in the head by a horse, uh, lived in a caravan, and had to live in Wales half the time. Oh. oh. Then no wonder this is your favourite time of the week. Do you look forward to this all week, these two hours? Yeah, it's alright. <laughs> it's 
Not what would make you truly happy, Carl? Do you mind me just asking that? What would make you truly happy in life? I was thinking about it in the week and I don't know. You don't know? There's I nothing I that you particularly <laughs> want that you feel like, once I've got that, that... Well, you, the easy answer there is money, isn't it? But I don't no, it's know. not I true. Don't know if it's true. No, you know, you just need, need enough money. Do you feel spiritually uh, satisfied? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so. Carl, have you embraced the good word of the Lord? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, well Jesus Christ, well, our Lord and Saviour. We're having a meeting tomorrow. It's in the church room. We'd like you to come along. I went to a church. Rick, I've got once. to say this. I, I was with. I got this. Uh, this housemate who I don't know that well. And right. I've been living with him for about uh, two two months or something. Right? Yeah. And he's in the kitchen. He's washing up. And I just turned to him. Right? And he doesn't know me that well because we, you know, we sort of talk to each other now, but we don't know. And I just turned to him. I went, Matt, have you got to know the good word of the Lord? And he went. And he looked at me with utter fear in his face. And I just went. I just think we should sit down a bit and you know just talk about you know the word of the gospels. And he's, and he just looked at me. And he was utterly petrified. I just started laughing, cracking up. And it's the sigh of relief. He yeah. was absolutely petrified. It's a brilliant game to play if you're getting a lift on a long car journey yeah. with people you don't Maybe know where you are. Just bring that out. Yeah. It's so terrifying. Yeah. I went once. If you're I'm also another good one is when you pick up a hitch, I say like, I wonder what this car would look like on fire. <laughs> exactly. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Sometimes well, I like to drive the wrong way down the motorway. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, uh, what does a knife feel like when it's going into your eye? <laughs> <laughs> what? Can you, you see that thinking? story in the week with um, with a farmer who got his arm stuck in a bit of machinery mm -hmm. and he was going on about, I mean he came on with a false arm so he knew something was wrong straight away. <laughs> but, um, you knew it wasn't going to end happily. But he said I'm a farmer, I've been a farmer for years and um, I've, I'm always telling people don't stick your arms in machines. He said but I got off my tractor and the machine had stopped mm. and he went to shift some, I don't know if it was a coat can or something that. That was in the field and yeah. the machine. Bloody cage and he cage. Oh, this is not the famous one that about 15 years, and, he, and he, he took his arm to yeah. the hospital and he was making jokes. His no, arm no, was in ice. He didn't take his. No, no, no. no. What it was, it was um, <laughs> his hand went in and the machine started again. Yeah. And it started pulling, it, pulling at his skin. Oh. Right? So, like, the skin was coming off his arm yeah. and it was going around the rollers yeah. and he's pulling back like that. So he's like, oh, God. Yeah. And the skin's like being wrapped around and it's like pulling it. So he can see his bone and stuff. Oh, no. And um, he was there for like ages going, oh, God. And he had um, a, a pen knife in his pocket. So he got that out with the other hand, managed to open it. I mean, that's... that's yeah, because yeah, they stick, do don't they, after a while. I've got, I've got one of those um, Swiss Army knives. Yeah, and well, that's what it was. I, 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 yeah, I can't do it with two hands sometimes once they get all full of gunk. He managed to do that with one hand and yeah. cut away at his skin. That's not true, is it? Yeah. Has he learned to farm again, like the drummer of Def Leppard? Let's learn to drum again. And they got like, just like the handles. He's like farm now with just one arm. <laughs> <laughs> it was good because he was making a joke out of it. And that. Oh, that's I think, good. Though. I think that's yeah. good. But um, that doesn't mean you can, Steve. Then. No, for sure. He had to cut his own flesh off to <laughs> escape a combine harvester. Yeah. He doesn't need you, you know. Making wise cracks. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Sure. But I, I just always remember getting a hot plate out of the oven when I was younger, and that absolutely killed. Yeah. It stuck to my fingers, and I just thought the pain that he must have been going through. Yeah. Must have been what? You must must have been worse than a hot plate. Oh, must yeah. have been worse than maybe dropping a pie. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> That's nearly it. That is pretty much it. XFM 104.9. Fast approaching three o'clock. It is indeed. Uh, is that pretty much it, Carl? We, is this our last link? I'd wrap it up. Yeah? Yeah, yeah so would I, actually. Uh, it's song for the ladies' time. And this is a song you put me on to, Rick. It's a beautiful song. Uh, Special View, a.k.a. Telescopic Love from The Only Ones. Uh, the B-side of Another Girl on Another Planet. Their only hit, maybe? Uh, well, yeah, I think one of them. But, um, Some great stuff on the, uh, the best of yeah. ones, which it's just a band kind of... Another Girl on Another Planet. That might be up for the best intro in a rock and roll record of all time. I'll put up Won't Get Fooled Again and Another Girl on Another Planet. Foxy, he's already putting up Money for Nothing. <laughs> exactly. So uh, <laughs> maybe we'll run that competition next week. Yeah, although Walk of Life is particularly good. <laughs> <laughs> here well, comes Charlie singing <laughs> oldies, goldies, <laughs> big bop lula baby, here I... <coughs> oh, jeez. Oh, nonsense. Walk of life. Okay, so this is a uh, special view from The Only Ones, a song for the ladies, and that's it. See you next Goodbye. Time.